Sound Studios brought to you by Old Mutual. Welcome from a sunny Johannesburg during the month of September. Karabo Senna, who is the general manager and rights holder for SAMRO. One heck of a long title. Yes. But, but what we are going yeah, to talk yeah. about <laughs> from an artist perspective today, which is so exciting, is you're a member of SAMRO. How do you get the most out of that SAMRO membership? But Karabo, before I, I dive, dive into that, let's just go back a little step. What is your sure. proudest moment and achievement so far th that you have worked on that you thought this is, this is absolutely amazing? I think, you know, Martin, in terms of Samro particularly, uh, for me, it has been, you know, just working on, you know, unlocking the, the way Samro works and making it more transparent for members. Uh, because Samro previously was, you know, previously operate in such a manner that most members didn't understand what was happening essentially. So, so us coming in and saying, number one, let's, let's obviously revitalize the portal. Uh, let's make sure that our, our, you know, undocumented works, I'm sure you are, you are now aware of that. Now we, we are, we are, you know, allowing members to then go ahead and, you know, notify the undocumented works. Let's also release the unit rates, you know, something that I know, you know, other CMOs are not doing currently, but we're making our members aware that these are your unit rates. So you can go ahead and sit and calculate what your essential, you know, royalty should be. And if we don't actually pay you correctly, yes, you will then raise any inquiry to say, guys, I'm not happy with this. And that's something that we look at and we make sure that we correct, you know. And, and I think that that transparency of making sure that we are not fixated of saying we want to be seen as being perfect. No, it's okay for somebody to say, listen, you are wrong here and we'll fix that. Just to, just to clarify before I go on, um, I found the term very exciting, the unit rate. That means yes. my song, Martin Myers, plays on Radio Metro, for example, at midday. Sure. You can yeah. go back and calculate what it's worth. Is, is that what you're saying? Essentially that. So you could, you could sit at home and then say, okay, fine. Uh, you know, my song plays, I don't know, 10 times a day on Radio Metro as an example. You grab that unit rate for Radio Metro, and that's a second. So every single second, we are actually informing you how much that second is worth. And you can then calculate it and then come up with a number, you know, once you multiply it with the number of seconds. And that's essentially what we are doing to say, listen, uh, you know, we want to be as transparent as possible so that we pay the correct value. And that's a very important component to the royalties, which has been missing, you know, in the past. What has been your biggest lesson that has actively supported your success? I mean, you're, you're one of the senior executives in a very large organization in South Africa holding a, a, a critical stake. What yeah. is that success? So I think one of the most important things, because, um, you know, I always say people say you are in right holder service. I say, no, I mean membership, right? Because that's the people that I deal with. What I've learned is that irrespective of what you know from a business context, from your background, there is so much value from simply just listening to the members. So anytime, and I know I, I deal with probably one about easily myself, 20 complaints every single day, easily. 20 complaints, which, you know, one needs to sit and deal with it in more detail. And you can, I'm sure, appreciate the fact that for me to deal with it, it means that other people have looked at it and somehow have said, listen, we need somebody else, you know, with a little bit much more sort of leeway to analyze this thing and come up with a decision for whatever given reason. From those, you learn so much. And the lessons there allow us to 
embed her SEMRO in different ways thereafter to say, okay, we need to make sure that we improve ourselves so that at the end of the day, our members get the most value. So listening to those members uh, and, and a lot of them, they would call it that I fight with them, but I don't, you know, per se, but we have constructive discussions and it's always good to come back to it. And when we are done, somebody saying, you know what, I actually appreciate this conversation. And we, we then, after that, become friends, like literally, you know, then the person can send me an email at any given time. I help them then. They, and that for me is something that I really value and I learn a lot from. Where do you go? Because I'm going to touch on Samro going back a couple of years and then looking forward. Yeah. I think that's what we need to do. You know, COVID has given us the opportunity to re-engage and look at things completely differently. But where yeah. are you going currently to gain insights about the business that you're in, whether it be your peer group and, and, and what are you reading, you know, to, to give um, people who are watching this an idea of where to go and, and, and seek knowledge? Yeah. So, so I think uh, in terms of, I obviously read quite broadly in terms of uh, not just the music space, but in terms of this space, a book that I normally gravitate to because sometimes irrespective of what you think you know, sometimes you need a point of reference. But say, you know what, I'm not sure of this thing. And you go back. And, and for me, it's, it's the book uh, by Nick Mizukis. Uh, that, that, that's, that's the one, you know, literature piece that always sort of balances me in terms of, you know, just content and what is that is right. Uh, even though you try and read the act in itself, Sometimes you'll find yourself asking yourself more questions than answers, but that book allows that, you know, to be quite simple. And I think from a, from a you know, social media, I mean, I follow a lot of people, but uh, I find that the most authoritative sources for me, it's, uh, it's a website, I think it's called Music uh, Worldwide. Um, you know, I, I sign up to the newsletter. It, it assists in just keeping you abreast with what's happening happening internationally. Besides the local sort of environment, which normally I would even know of issues or, or changes in the local environment even before it hits the news for the most part, because I deal with a lot of people. But the international, you know, circuit, you know, a lot of us are not involved there. But it's good because you see where the trends are heading and you know, you try as much as possible to ensure that as an organization, we restructure ourselves in such a way that we appeal to those trends as much as possible because they are mostly driven by the social constructs. You know, if you look at music, it's closely linked to the society. And, and, and we try to make sure that we don't, you know, lag behind too much, you know, in terms of that. But for me, those are the two main sources that I normally go to and, and I find them quite rewarding. It's funny, we've spent, we've spent a good 10 minutes building the conversation, yet we're talking business and artists are going to turn around and say, but I just want to play my chops and do my thing. Yeah. Has yeah. the business side become even more vital nowadays for artists to understand? I, I think I would even go as far as saying that it is not just vital, it is the underlying principle of what artists do because a lot of artists sometimes yes tend to see themselves as artists only for example but the principle is that because you there's a commercial transaction in what you do understand that it's the business and 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 that is the mindset that you need to have at all time it, it can't be the fact that now what you're good at becomes what you do you have a business and you, are, you happen to be good at something. So at the end of the day, it's a business and those business principles, you know, are invaluable. Um, I think these types of forums provide artists with, you know, the know-how uh, because there's so much information that is all over the place, but sometimes it needs to be funneled so that you can just, through just looking at that, particular sort of like lane, you get all this information and you're able to digest it. Uh, so, so I, I mean, I'm, I'm thankful for this, you know, the curation of all this content. And, and I think artists need to learn more about business, uh, you know, because he is perfecting the art. That's something they're good at, but business is something that is quite uh, necessary in this environment. Right. We're not, we're now climbing into the, to, into the business side completely oh. now. <laughs> Let's sure. 
let's go and state once and for all to artist John or Peter or Sipos out there yes. watching, what exactly does Samro do and how does it work in a nutshell? Because you're there to collect money on behalf yeah. of artists. I can't Correct. stress it enough. Um, and we're going to talk about there's been dirty laundry in the media last year. You've got a new yeah. CEO. There's a new wave of optimism and cleaning up things. Mm -hmm. so, so let's look from now forward and exactly what you do to explain to artist Martin or Sipo or Tim Baker. Yeah. So, so Samra essentially uh, is here to uh, be at, it's an administrator of rights. That's the first thing. Because I always say to people, for us to be able to license anything, we need to have the rights. That's the first thing. So, so artists or what we call composers, authors, and publishers, would come to Samra and say, these are the compositions we have created, or the lyrics. Therefore, anywhere where these are used, I want you to monitor that and then license it. And that is what is converted into a royalty. So it's that simple. But the, the raw resources are always the rights. Thereafter, these rights would be monetized. And that's a nice way of just saying that you go out to market and say, you are using our works, the ones that we're administrating, therefore this is the license. So we try to secure the best license fee that we can. And then from there on, we process all of that usage and then we pay out uh, the composers and the publishers. And that's essentially what Semro has to do. Now, you talk quite succinctly about that money flow. Let's take a song. Yes. It gets released, either self-released or a record company releases it. It now goes to radio because radio is still so critical yeah. um, in South Africa for breaking artists. How does that right. money flow? Because surely the radio stations have different rates that they pay you because of the advertising revenue that they have. Some are more profitable than others. How does that flow so an artist can understand that? And if my song is playing today on radio, do I get paid out next week or six months time yeah. or eight months time? That's a good question. Yeah, so uh, our biggest distributions firstly are radio and TV. Those are the biggest distributions. So you, and when I say big, I mean that uh, radio, you're looking in the, in the regions of about 120 million rands and then TV, you're looking at the regions of about 140 to 150 million rands. So, so those form the bulk of what Semro would distribute besides all the other distributions. So if we take an example of radio, Semro, for most radio stations, would have a blanket license. So that license essentially says that um, we will take a percentage of your uh, advertising revenue. Uh, and from that, because obviously the radio makes money through music as well. So we'll take that percentage and that is the license. So the higher that percentage, obviously, the, the better for everybody from a similar perspective. But once we get that percentage, that's the license fee. When we get that license fee, we also need to get the usage to say, how much music has a radio station actually used? So it's not always the, 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 you know, the outlook that uh, your popular radio stations are the ones that will pay the most. But obviously, the bigger the radio station is, it helps because they've got more air drive. But even if a radio station uses less music, it also helps those where their music was used because all it means is that you are factoring whatever money that you've collected in terms of the license fee to either less, you know, lower levels of music or high levels of music. But essentially, if you, I want to give an example, Metro FM. If Metro FM gives, gives us a million rands, we then get usage from Metro FM that says, we have played a million seconds of music. That will mean that every single, you know, sort of like every single second there will be worth a rand. That rand, then all we have to do as SEM is to say, there is an administration cost to then collecting this amount and then distributing it. We simply take away the administration cost. The administration cost 
varies. The last financial year, it was, I think, 32%. So meaning from that rand, you are left then with only then 78 cents from that rand. That 78 cents is then passed through to the member. It's paid through to the member. So that's what essentially happens with every single usage. The challenge obviously comes in where either one, we don't have the usage, or two, we don't get the money. That's where now we as Samro have to push. And, uh, you know, as you know, you've spoken to Manoba, uh, you know, the GM for licensing to get all those particular radio stations, especially the smaller ones, the local radio stations, licensed so that we can always make sure that we pay our members correctly. So I'm an artist and I'm hearing my song on a particular radio station and I get my Samro report and I realize, oh, I heard it 10 times, but it's only reflecting five times. Yeah. What mechanism can I bring to you to sit down and say, sir, in this environment, I know I've had 10 plays, you're reflecting five plays. Can um, a system like Radio Monitor or yeah. F-Zero, is it presentable to you to say, look, how do we tie up these discrepancies? Yeah. So firstly, I think there's always an option before you get a monitoring tool in, you can always log a query with Samro uh, because in our statement is quite clear as to the spins or the usage. So when you see that, and it just seems, you know, for most part, you know, members know that, listen, I, I listen to the radio, I've got a feel of there's 500 spins there. So if now all of a sudden it's 20, you can log a query to customer services, uh, you know, at samro.org.za so that we can first look through the usage. That's one thing, because what sometimes happens is that when the usage comes through, it's either we didn't get enough information from the broadcaster to inform us as to who actually, maybe even the title of the song, maybe it was written incorrectly, or even the composers were not included, or even the performer. So if that is missing, we would take this money. Uh, I'm sure you've heard us talk about the undocumented works. Absolutely. That's where it's parked, because we are not sure. So when somebody logs a query, that's what we firstly do. We say, okay, fine. Now they'll give us a bit more information to say, hey, listen, please look at this. And, and now we start to scratch there and assess, okay, fine, let's see if we can identify anything that would give us information. Once we, do, we identify that, then we pay it out. Let's say any member chooses to get a, a monitoring tool. We, we do use that. Um, I mean, for now, I, I, I can say that the one that we know we have used, it's a radio monitor. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, we are actually uh, currently busy with a pilot where we are also testing, you know, uh, which monitoring tool will best suit SAMRO so that SAMRO itself does not even need you to submit a monitoring you know, usage, we are actually providing you with one to say, hey, this is what we've received according to this monitoring usage, and that's that. So, so but once you provide it, given what we're dealing with now, once you provide it, we do use that to actually account for what we have paid you. So, so any member you know, can actually get a usage report from, you know, I know, yes, Radio Monitor is the most uh, popular one, but, you know, if there is uh, any other to say, Samro, here it is, and we do validate that, and then we will process uh, what has been uh, submitted to us. That's, 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 that's thank you. Um, yeah. In January this year, we all knew Zoom was a song by Fat Larry's band. Now we're Zooming all day in and out, streaming, there's a whole new vocabulary. How yeah. is that ecosystem for money happening? How are you getting money from, I, I'll mention the two streaming services that are in South Africa that we know well. Um, Quicket is doing some, some wonderful work. Ticket Pro is doing exceptional work. This yeah. conference is hosted on their platform. How does the revenue cycle work in that space for Samro to connect? Yeah. And what so, is the Samro artist? Yeah, so Samuel's Sam responsibility is to license any medium which uses their members' repertoire. That's essentially it. So digital obviously falls in that space. 
So the responsibility on SAMRO is to license every single one of these uh, Petula providers, or even some are on an event basis, some it's on a provider level. Uh, for example, if you look at like your Facebook of this world, you would license Facebook because then any content that is uh, you know, streamed there, you would deem that content as something that will fall under the Facebook license. So once you've licensed it, what that provider does is that they will also call, you know, provide you with usage to say, these are the songs that were played on our platform. They'll provide you with that. However, Semro can also monitor that particular, uh, um, let's say, portal or digital service provider and confirm to say, is your report correct? So we, we do check each other just to make sure that we can actually confirm that whatever you are giving us is correct versus what we may think you know is the correct uh, uh, sort of like usage but based on that we would distribute the same way we, we distribute for uh, radio or tv you know uh, it wouldn't matter what sort of like uh, type of of a distribution platform What is the, the artist's responsibility um, during that? During that? Show on what is their responsibility? What do they have to do um, in terms of supplying Samro with information? Uh, can you just repeat that? Uh, let you know uh, the technicalities here. Yeah? Um, what is the artist's responsibility, they're doing a show okay. say, for argument's sake on Friday night on the streaming platform. What um, documentation do they need to submit to Samro? So the only point an artist needs to interact with Samro in relation to usage is predominantly when it comes to live performances. So if it's not a live performance, Samro would then get the usage from the broadcaster wherever the broadcaster is. So, but however, if it is a live performance, because sometimes you could, you could, it could be a live performance um, over a, a different medium. So what is required there is that you then, as a member, you upload, uh, we have on the portal, uh, you, know, uh, you know, portal where you can include all your live performances and your set list that you performed. So we would need that included because Anytime it's a live performance, we need to know about it so we can validate that are we then receiving the income, you know, from our side so that we can pay you for those particular live performances. But remember, uh, we are paying for, we will pay the original composers of that work. So obviously if somebody goes and performs a cover of a certain song, don't expect to receive that. We will pay the original composers of that. But you still need to notify us that you performed uh, at a certain spot and it was streamed digitally, you know, for two digital means, yeah. Fabulous. You've had a new CEO, Mark Rosen, come in, um, an eminent legal mind. What are, what are the, the challenges and going forward that um, you need to look at because customer services come to the front and, and that's where you want to be. You want to be leading that conversation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, with Mark, uh, one of the things that we, or let me first say, one of the things that he's passionate about is, is obviously, you know, the music industry. That, that, that's number one. He's been in this industry for many, many years and, and he's seen different sides of it or he's also been on different sides where he has seen artists work throughout their lifetimes and at the end of the day, you know what, they are not able to make ends meet. And, and one of the things that we always debate about, and I mean, I probably speak to him every single week because there's always something that requires us to sort of like always sort of like, you know, engage on what do you think on this thing? Because as we change things in the organization, uh, he's one of obviously the, the, the main strategist and a thought leader. So we need to make sure that he's aligned with all the changes that we make. And, and you will find one of the first things, uh, like when I opened off saying that, you know, transparency, he's, he's 
you know, a champion for transparency. That's number one. Number two, he's also very focused on us making sure that we license, you know, competently. So at the end of the day, artists can only earn if, you know, wherever their works are used, those environments are licensed. So that value chain needs to be taken care of. And that's what we are always focused on. The other thing that we are always looking at is the timeline we take or the service level, you know, uh, to say, here's a query, it comes in at a certain point, And then at what point are we able to conclude it completely? So for us, those are key issues that we deal with every single day because we truly believe that if you take care of the financial stream uh, by growing several revenue, and then obviously uh, working on the costs as well, you know, members will earn more. Further to that, make it transparent so members know exactly how much they've been paid and where the money comes from, where it's going. And then lastly, make sure that that whenever they raise any feel that those are pillars that will drive the organization forward. Talking, you, you, you mentioned revenue. What are the type of figures for the last financial year that, that Samro collects? And can you update us about the national broadcast to the SABC? Because there's also been a lot of discussion in... in yeah, in, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so Samro, Samro's revenue is in the region of about, uh, you know, uh, half a billion rands. So that's, that's Samro's revenue. But I think the most important number, it's not necessarily the revenue because a lot of people focus on that. It's to say how much of that revenue is paid to local artists, right? Um, because Samro collects, but because of the usage on radio station, radio stations, some of that revenue goes to international artists. So in the last financials, uh, we saw that 300 million of that 500 million odd was paid to local artists. So, so it's, 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 it's a good number, but it's nowhere close to enough from our view um, in terms of how much we are paying to internationals like you know, the performers in America and in Europe, because that other 200 million could be staying in the country, but it's not, you know, it's, it's leaving the country. And this is all driven by the usage or uh, the playlists on our radio stations and TV stations. Those are the biggest drivers of, you know, how royalties actually, where, where this money actually flows to. So it, it was an improvement, however, from the, previous, from the previous year, because I think the previous year, we were just under 280 million that, that we paid locally. So that, that's a big uh, sort of like, uh, for us, that's a big uh, focus and that's what we want to improve. And I think uh, one of the other things that our chairman was also talking about is in relation to uh, you know women in the industry as well. Uh, we've got a keen eye on on you know female composers and and authors you know to make sure that you know the industry is open enough so that they are able to get in and understand how this industry works because we don't we you know when you look at the several numbers we certainly don't have enough of them that are even earning at a reasonable rate, you know, so that they can call this a career. And, and that is obviously a challenge that we have identified. And that's something that we are, we are, you know, partnering with other organizations to make sure that we get females in. And then as well, we are, we, we are also appealing all the time to, you know, uh, industry, um, as you spoke about the SABC, to say, guys, please play more local music, you know, because that, especially during this COVID period, that is what will make, you know, next year when we pay our radio and our TV distribution, that's what will make it sizable, where a composer, you know, or a member of Samro can feel the difference, say, wow, I can actually do something with what Samro paid us. Will In we, terms will of, we, yeah? Will we ever be able to to change that narrative. Um, I know Music Exchange has written letters uh, to local radio to, or South African radio mm -hmm. to try and change that narrative, to push the percentage up. There's been pushbacks about this 90% when it's never been a call about 90%. It's been a call no, yeah. to increase the yeah. South African content. Um, how do we as, as an industry, and we're all involved in this value chain, change that? Because 
that figure that's going out the country is very scary. Yeah, it is. And I mean, that's only for Samro. You know, if Samro is paying out to, you know, in the region of that amount, you can only imagine what's happening in Capasso and all the other societies. So I think the, the narrative, the narrative can actually change people's actions, you know, if the industry comes together. So different organizations in the industry understand that there is value in us having a single purpose of constantly communicating this to be it, you know, the, the politicians um, and then also the industry players and also the broadcasters. Because I don't believe that this could be something that's only driven you know, through uh, broadcasters and so forth. It has to be something that is, you know, from a, from a political side, politicians need to have a drive for that. And even society, because the more people are saying, listen, on a Sunday, I don't want to listen to Radio Metro and all I hear is essentially ballads and R&B that is predominantly American. Why? Don't we have enough of that content in the country? So up until that time where society can rally as well, but I think most of our artists have that, 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 that uh, appeal to society. They also need to use it. They all need to get together and create, be it a hashtag, but make it consistent to say, guys, request it. Because once customers, people that listen to that radio station demand it, the radio stations will follow and they will make sure that all of a sudden we hear artists that we've never heard before, you know? And I remember when I was in Cape Town, for example, I mean, there were artists that they were, they were phenomenal, you know, at the end of the day, you say, but why haven't I heard of this person? And it's all because of the fact that, you know, the platform is obviously congested, you know? Uh, so if we move a bit of those international content out, there will be space for these guys. Yeah. Where, um, an artist is, is watching this, where does he need more education in terms of what Samro is doing? Uh, because sometimes people are very bewildered. There's yeah. so many collecting agencies. Yes, yes. Which are my most important when I've got the song out and I'm starting out? What do I really need yeah. to be in touch with? So I think um, if you are a writer of music, so you're a creator of music, right? Um, definitely Semro is your first point of call. Um, and we have material already on our website. Um, you know, we, we, we seek to create content all the time that, especially in video format, so that, you know, it's easy to engage um, and make sure that you learn as much as possible as to how this industry works. We've got several videos that will teach you different things about, you know, uh, your, your, I think the, the right that you own whenever you've created a work, but over and above that as to how we will pay you as well. And how do you use the portal, for example, so that you benefit from that interaction with Samuel? Because a lot of the musicians still want a very uh, sort of like, uh, you know, physical approach where I know Karabo and then Karabo will help me. But we are moving slowly towards a self-help sort of, uh, um, you know, functionality within Seminole, similar to what the banks are doing. You know, before, I think 15 years ago, you would have never, ever thought of sitting in front of your phone and transferring money and doing all those sort of things. So Samuel is slowly going there. And I think that is clearly visible when you look at our portal and what we are doing there. One thing that is coming as well, uh, and, and, and I, I do know that we'll fit it in within the year, uh, and I think this is new, so we have never spoken about it, but it's the fact that we want to also make our membership process seamless because you won't believe it, even now, somebody still has to sign out the form, a deed and everything, and then still email it to Samuel. So that is going to be electronic, like literally within the next few months, and a member will simply be able to do everything they need, you know, while at home, and then they get paid for it. But I think there is a big responsibility on all our members to make sure that they go onto our portal and make sure that any work that they've registered is correctly registered, first of all. And once that is done, they need to also monitor their statements because that is your bank statement, essentially, you know, 
monitor it, make sure, does it look right? Am I happy with what I see there? If I'm not, raise it with us. Then we've put in a new functionality as early as Monday. Uh, so that um, Monday, the 7th you know, of September, where now you can go on the undock and look through the undock yourself and identify works that belong to you. Yes, we'll validate it uh, on our side, but the essence is that we are moving towards the self-help so that be at 11 o'clock at night, you can sit and administer your music. You don't have to wait for seminar to open at eight o'clock and close at five. That's absolutely, That's absolutely um, it's really, really exciting. There's more yeah. in this. No, but Sam Rose against the artist. And what you've so clarified so beautifully in our discussion is we're not. We're here to serve you, but the artist needs to get out of bed and actually do the research, yes. do the looking, do the reading. Let's, let's crystal yeah. gaze next year this time. Where mm. do you see the growth coming for in, 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 the, in the music industry? What areas are you looking to increase revenue and what should artists be looking out for? So interestingly enough, before COVID, uh, the focus was on live music, you know? So, so that was a strategy to say, listen. <laughs> we, <laughs> <What the? laughs> so, so, so that was really the strategy to say, if you look at our live music space, Semro pays in the region of about 5 million rands, right? But the local music space, uh, if you look, there's different researchers, but they'll show you that it's in the upwards of about 150 million rands. So there's a huge pot of money that is really not being licensed correctly. And okay, we know now with COVID, fine, that, that, that won't work as well. One of the big things within Samro now is that uh, even with the cur currently the, the broadcasters that we have, so we, we have uh, from a digital space, uh, we have seen because of COVID, uh, there's a lot more participation on the digital space. So the licensing department is working very closely there with us to make sure that sometimes a member would come through even with, with a platform that we are not even aware of, say, hey, my works are being performed there. So we are focused on digital currently. And as I said, uh, live music is one of them. And the big component as well is revising current agreements and making sure that there is fair value in them. Because there's no point of saying that, oh, I've got all these agreements, but maybe they're not fair. So that is also one of the key focuses. I mean, you, you were talking live music, and I know there's been percentages bandied about if you could just have some clarity. Say, for example, you and myself, yeah. we're in a duo, and, and we decide and we sell out the Ticket Pro Dome in Johannesburg. That's what, ten yeah. or 12,000 people, and there's 100 rand or 500 rand a ticket. Um, what percentage does that promoter, who happens to be Jonathan, have to pay Samro so people can work it out? Roughly. Yeah, it's 2%. Um, it's 2%. Um, so, so of the ticket takings, right? Well, that's uh, not the so, price. Yeah, yeah. So that's 2%. And, and, and I think it's a very important number because a lot of times somebody would expect a different number altogether. But you would find that, um, you know, we always get into this sort of uh, educational session to say, listen, this is what we collect. So at the end of the day, we can only distribute from that. And I think it also matters as to how many people also performed in that particular concert. Obviously, the more music, you know, the more money has to spread to, you know, multiple people. Yeah. So if it was a one-man show, great stuff. You know, if it was just a few guys, also good for you. So it, it will depend as to what sort of uh, concert it is. What other areas in bringing our amazing discussion to a close have we not yeah. touched on that you feel are vitally important for artists who are in the business at the top of their game and artists who are getting in need to understand to be able to get the best value out of Samro? You know, I think um, I want to deal with that notion because it's something very important, something that you said, where you said, Artists always have this, you know, there's an impression in the, in the, in the, and I, I know because 
I hear it all the time, the impression that Semro is not for artists, you know, and, 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 and that, that always comes through, you know, very negatively because anytime you start any engagement, for the most part, you start it from a point of view where somebody feels like, okay, you are not there for my, for my interest, you are there for your own interest. But I think it's, it's essential for members or any composer, you know, who's uh, signed with Semri to understand that we cannot be without you. You know, it's, it's, it's just impossible. One of the biggest things that we are trying to do as much uh, these days as well is to create value. You know, when we create value, it's also the social element as well to say, um, I know at the beginning of the year, we also changed and I know a lot of people say, but what is that? You know, we don't even care about it. But the funeral cover, you know, that covers the entire family, we moved it from 20,000 to 25,000, right? And this is something that Samro does that I know no society does. You can go and call any society internationally or even in Africa, nobody does that. The other part is also with the retirement annuity, right? Retirement annuity, I know, yes, uh, you know, we, we also have SEMPRA that has launched some program, but, you know, the SEMPRA retirement annuity is, has a book value at this point of 270 million rands. So that's artist money. People have saved up for that. And it takes, uh, you know, an organization with vision to say, hey, we know that one day you will retire. You will need this money. And that is what Semro is looking at. And, and I always say to people, you know what, why would Semro do all these things if they're not there for the artist? You know, so, so I think, yes, challenge us. That's my one thing. I always say to people, listen, we are not just, you know, we don't know everything. Challenge us where you think we are wrong. And it's our job to try as much as possible to fix it and make sure that you are happy at the end. And there's always a way to solve everything. But at the end of the day, SEMRA is there for you. It can't exist without you. That's the one big message I'd like to drive. Thank you, Karaba. Before you go, you can always ask questions. Maybe I've been scared to ask a question on behalf of, on behalf of people in our country. Okay. Why is there something in the future where we can have perhaps one collecting agency collecting all the rights? the mechanical and the authors, et cetera. We have yeah. Paso, we have Samro, we have Sampra, we have Risa. Can we so, not have one organization doing that all? There's a simple answer you can. There, there is, if you look at the infrastructure, especially nowadays where you have, it, it's more tech driven. So it's not, it's not, you know, uh, somebody coming up with papers of cue sheets and those sort of things. You can do that. And, and, and Samra and Capasso uh, have already started in terms of that because most of our digital licensing, uh, it's, it's, we, we license, it's, it's a combined effort where, you know, Capasso would license certain digital providers on our behalf already so that we cut down on the administra administration costs. But I think the best way to start it is that, you know, we always get the same information. The back end information for most societies is the same. That's the best place to start it off because you're saying, hey, guys, Radio Metro plays the same song. So if they send data out there, they'll still send the same thing. They can't dice it. It's the same thing. Yeah. So why am I sending it to four different people? So I can just send it to one. And let's say that one person just, you know, that's whatever. And they give you your share of what you need. And then from there on, that's that. And, and that's where it can start. And then slowly you can transition that idea to say, but if the back end, which is the biggest portion of most of these societies, the back end is one, and then you can start to say the customer service end as well can be one because the product offerings are not totally different. It's just a nip and tuck there and there where there are overlaps, but the product offering is essentially the same. And for the most part, we deal with the same members who you know, have the same challenges, but have to speak to four different people. One big thing though, uh, but this one I can't unveil at this point, but 
you know, we are already working with Capasso to align certain policies so that even if a member, you know, goes to Capasso, you know, and if that aspect touches on Sambro, we already get informed and then we can also deal with it on our side. And then the member doesn't have to come to Sambro. Same thing happens vice versa. So we are trying to align nicely so that it's easier for the member at the end of the day, they don't have to speak to two different people. Very exciting. But this, is, this is a music conference. So now I want to go to the music. Um, what are you listening to? What have you listened to in the last four or five months, South African music that perhaps people haven't touched on or, or, or want to explore? What's on your playlist? Um, so I listen to Berita. So uh, my daughter happens to love her song as well. Uh, like a couple of her songs, but Berita for me, that's the one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, actually, it's, it's an interesting one. Let, let me just see. I'm actually holding my phone. You're going to cheat just now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's not a cheat because, oh, and, and, and interestingly enough, I like oldies, eh? South African oldies. So there I've got a playlist um, where I've got like different names. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just read out a few. Uh, I'm a bit of an old spirit there. I've got uh, Sankomot, I've got Judith Sipuma, I've got also uh, Stimela, I've got obviously Brahu, you know, I've got Nati, um, uh, Steve Kekana. So, so I, I also like the, the old side. And then there, I'll listen to the more like the, the popular side. Um, and I might not look like the type, but I listen to uh, a lot of hip hop. So, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so I listen to like Shane Eagle, you know. So, so for me, that's that's you know, um, I, I listen to obviously the, the 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 normal sort of uh, you know sort of genre where you listen to uh, the guys that are nice to see and those sort of guys. So yeah, so that that's sort of like my 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 pick. Um, I, I I try very hard to make sure that I balance my consumption. And, and I know, someone said, but why do you do that? Because I know the impact it has whenever I stream music that is South African and whenever I stream music that is American. It means the 60 rands that I pay Apple, that 60 rands gets split and I am then contributing to that artist that I will probably never ever meet and I can never ever probably one day speak to and share my appreciation of their music. So, you know, I tend to lean a lot more to South Africans so that that contribution goes to the South African members. And knowing that I choose pay one of the highest rates, you know, in terms of streaming. So that's why I chose that one as well. Oh, I love it that you came onto this. I was gonna let you go, but now you've got my, my mind thinking. The streaming services, Spotify, yes. iTunes, yes. Deezer, YouTube, yeah. YouTube. Which mm -hmm. is the the most important, and which one gives the, uh, the most value to the artist? You alluded to now iTunes, and why is it so impossible to get someone from some of these places to speak to? It's almost easier to swim across the English Channel than to get an answer out of some is of it? these companies. Um, so, so as you correctly said, I mean, yeah, so I think they should actually avail themselves a bit more because especially to these type of conferences, because they're speaking to people that give them, you know, that raw material that, you know, the consumers end up enjoying. But I think uh, just, just to answer you, uh, iTunes tends to be the one that pays the most or has the highest rate simply because the user of iTunes for the most part tends to be the one that is much more agreeable to loading their credit card details on the phone already when they sign up and to be subscribed to these services. So, so that, that, that's the one reason why Apple, you know, even though it doesn't have a huge market share in terms of iTunes, but when you can get yourself to be, you know, to have high streams in that DSP, you are more likely to, to generate a lot more revenue than somebody who would go to YouTube, for example, even though it's much more accessible, but because of you know, the fact that the rates are so low, you need a whole lot more 
to actually generate something meaningful. And with with Spotify, Spotify is a little bit, you know, it's more like the, the median of, of uh, everything. But uh, from my perspective, that's why I, I subscribe uh, to, you know, you know, to iTunes, because I know that, listen, it, it tends to benefit members a lot more, um, you know, from, from our perspective. Yeah. Bravo. And, and, and finally, thank you. This has been most enlightening. The hour has gone very quickly. Your yep. aspirations and targets from now towards the end, of the end of the year, what things do you want to conclude to enhance Samro even more for the members? Yeah, so I think right now the focus is for me, um, you know, the, the self-help functionalities. I think COVID has, has shown us that we need to gear ourselves up a little bit more for our artists to, to interact with us seamlessly. And uh, the next big thing is also Samro being able to have a music monitoring tool uh, that obviously monitors all the stations and the radio stations and TV stations so that we seek to pay correctly. That is one of the big things that we are driving. And we do see it even coming through within this financial year where we will have, you know, uh, an efficient uh, membership service uh, system where you can sign up as well as, uh, you know, an efficient um, music monitoring system that will ensure that when we distribute, you know, all the various queries that normally arise uh, actually dissipate and people trust that what's in the seminal statement is essentially what happened out there. And on that note, uh, I'd like to say thank you, thank you for, for supporting Music Exchange over all these thank years. You. I mean, we had your former CEO, Nicholas Mozzazzi, who was very involved and delighted that yourself and Q have, have given so much over the years. And yeah. got it to 10 years. Let's keep going. And delighted to have Certainly. you as part of the team. Thank you. Always a pleasure, Martin. Thanks a lot. Pleasure. Ciao. Bye-bye. Okay, thanks. Bye. Music has changed. How it makes us feel never will. The time is now to visit mstudios.co.za.